If you want to learn how to monetize your business, this is how. So this is part of my premium newsletter offering. Right now it is $5 a month, but I'm going to go through everything I learned and wrote verbally in this video. So you can listen to it while you cook or drive or do chores. Um, so I'm basically just going to go through everything that I learned and wrote in this article. Unfortunately, the templates and the written part of this knowledge is going to be for paid subscribers only, but I'm just going to go through all the content for free um, in this video. So if you prefer listening to it or watching me talk to the screen, um, this is perfect for you. So this week's issue is about making money. Um, in case you missed last week's article, I do these articles about how you can build your business every single week. Last week was about what I learned from going viral so that you don't make the same mistakes that I do. But of course, you can't really rely on virality for a sustainable business. So that's why I spent this past week exploring ways to monetize and reach my goal of $20,000 monthly recurring revenue. So that's $20,000 every month. So a summary of what we'll be going over today is first, I have some free templates for your business. And these are things that I created to help me monetize. Um, second, how I'm getting to 20K monthly recurring revenue. So I'm going to be sharing some of my budgets and my plans uh, for monetizing. Third, why I'm sharing all of this transparently online. And fourth, some miscellaneous other learnings and announcements. So first up is the free templates. So I have a document that shows sponsors the value that I bring to them. So the key takeaways for you after looking at the document, which I will describe in a second, is first use benefit driven headlines instead of generic headlines. Like these are the results that I got. Be more specific, like say, I'll give you an example when I go through my template later. Um, second, include specific examples or case studies of things that you've accomplished for similar companies. Third, put the most important information at the top uh, so it's easier for the sponsors to read through everything that they need because to be honest, you want to save them time. So put the most important stuff that you want them to see at the very top. Don't hide it somewhere in the document. Um, fourth, the call to action links should be throughout the document. So you don't want to make people scroll all the way up or scroll all the way down just to click the link to book a sponsor slot with you. And fifth, contact sponsors on LinkedIn if you don't get a response elsewhere. Um, you always want to follow up multiple times because people are busy and they will appreciate the reminder sometimes. So I'm going to go over this template verbally. Again, if you are a premium subscriber, uh, it's $5 a month right now, but I'm going to increase the pricing in February to $11. Um, but if you're a premium subscriber, you get emails like this every week. And sometimes I release these templates that I use and you can just duplicate it on Notion and um, personalize it for your business. So this is my sponsor template. It's what I send to potential sponsors I want to work with. I have my passion fruit. That's passion and then F-R-O-O-T, my passion fruit link with all the metrics from my newsletter, like the open rate, the click-through rate, the number of subscribers, as well as my Instagram. So like my followers, um, the demographics of my followers and the engagement rate of my account. So first, front and center, it says partnering with me equals long-term fans of your product. And then I list all the benefits of partnering with me that I know businesses care about. So. For context, I am very interested in working with productivity SaaS companies, so productivity business to consumer software as a service companies. Um, so think Notion or any productivity tool that you use and love. So the first benefit I have for these companies is improve adoption rates with valuable use cases. And then I list um, a few examples. And then the second one is increase monthly recurring revenue and weekly active users with my unique templates that encourage people to use your tool regularly. And I give some examples of ways I do that. And then the third one is increase customer lifetime value and build long-term loyalty in your brand. And that's how I got almost 3K in revenue for an education company. So these three metrics are things that companies care about. So I put them up front there and then I dive deeper into each of those three. So the first one was adoption rates to creative templates and use cases and I write down the problem that the business has which is like people often think these software as a service tools are too complicated they think they'll try it later but you want to get them to try it now because to be honest no one's going to try it later they're going to forget about it and get distracted 
So my solution is, is I have DM automation. So after people see my video, they, I DM them the link if they comment something specific and then that means they try it right now. So I screenshotted some of the comments that I've gotten from people and people are saying, you need to give me this template ASAP. I have downloaded Notion, which is the software I promoted um, to get started on this ASAP. Um, and then I have a headline here in case people don't read all these testimonials. So my headline is, I wasn't sure how to use this tool, but I downloaded it to get started on an ASAP. And I just link a bunch of examples to show that I have accomplished this result for other companies. Um, and then I have another set of testimonials, and this is under the heading, I use all the tools you recommended, I'm loving it, and it's just screenshots of DMs and comments and Instagram story tags of people using tools that I recommend. So that's just going to build a lot of trust between myself and the sponsor, basically saying, like, I have done this before, and I can achieve these results for your company as well. So the next key metric is the month increasing monthly recurring revenue with lifelong use cases. So the problem for the company here is there's a perceived complicated templates that people will use later. So when you sign up for something, there's prob sometimes they try to make you use templates and they're like, oh, you don't have to start from scratch. You can use these templates. But like, there's so many to choose from. They don't know what to use or even like what to do. So my solution is to create a unique long-term use case around a specific problem. So like habit tracking, workplace documentation, a friendship newsletter. And then these are things that you update not just once, but like daily, weekly, monthly. So that's why the metric here is monthly recurring revenue with lifelong use cases. And again, I'm linking my passion fruit page, which is how people can book a sponsorship slot with me throughout the page alongside these screenshots of my metrics. So like all the accounts I've reached, uh, the video saves, shares, comments, and likes. My third benefit that I bring to the business that I outlined in this document that I'm sending to sponsors is to increase the customer lifetime value. Then I have a case study here where I increased uh, education company's uh, revenue by $3,000. I think that's like 7% of the total revenue or like, yes, I think it was 7%. So the problem is low trust hurts people's conversions. People don't trust ads. They don't like ads. They don't like complicated email funnels. Um, companies are spending months A-B testing their ads and landing pages, trying to figure out how to get their customers to trust them and give them money. But my solution was that my audience trusts my recommendations and have a higher willingness to pay. And I screenshotted a bunch of things that the, the DMs that I've gotten of people being like, I'm confused what this is, but like, as long as it's from you, like I trust it, I'm like ready for this, you know, I am learning a lot from you and I'll apply everything I learn. So I screenshotted these as more social proof um, and I included a case study. So I actually work for an education company and I posted the same video on that company account and then I posted the same one on my vegan tech nomad, my personal Instagram account. So on the company account, there were less than five comments, we didn't really make any sales. And usually on the company account, we just get like, oh, you know, is it free? Like you're just selling something. There's not a lot of trust there. Um, but on my account, we have people commenting, I need an ASAP. Like, what is this course? Um, you know, they're not saying like, oh, it's an ad because they trust me already. And I always only recommend things that I personally tried and liked. So the level of trust is already there. I told them to use my coupon code so we could track the purchases. And it was almost almost three thousand dollars in revenue from my video i posted it once but um there were some people who did not get to use my coupon code so it's probably a bit more than three thousand so at the very end i wrote ready to amass an army of fans book a slot with me i'm open to custom collaborations just let me know what your goals are and i link my passion fruit um my passion fruit website and then I also include audience demographics. So as part of my newsletter, people have to fill out a survey about what they currently do and what they're interested in. So I'm going for productivity software as a service tools because everybody is interested in productivity. So that means I can charge higher because it's a very specific niche. Uh, most people are employed or students and the sp sponsors I reached out to, um, those are their target demographics. So, you know, you can charge higher for that. You can see that your argument just becomes a lot more compelling because it's like uh, they'll be more convinced that it's a good fit. Um, and I also screenshot my Instagram metrics here, like which countries people are from, the age range, and then see if it's a fit with the company. Um, and yeah, so that was that template. If you want to do the same thing, you can just uh, subscribe to premium. You'll, you can find it in your email and just duplicate that template. Okay, the second template is 
basically a template that um, I wanted to test out free business growth consultations because I'm thinking of doing um, like an agency business. Um, so I created a document to help my friend grow her account um, because I wanted to do this for free just to test out if there was a demand and if I had the skills needed to do it and kind of set these processes in motion so that when I do start charging for it, it'll be a lot easier. And when it's free and for friends, it's like more chill and I can get that confidence. So here are your takeaways if you want to eventually offer coaching or consultation in the future. So number one, do your research first. Research the niche you want to be in, but don't stay stuck in your research. A lot of people are like, they're just thinking, oh, I need to research more, I need to know more. But you need to start taking action by doing small things to validate your solution first. So like how I started offering free growth consultations for friends and people I knew. Because if you don't take action, you're never going to learn anything. And you just can't keep doing endless research because it feels productive, but it's actually not because you're not actually working towards your goals. Um, you have to like jump in and take action, even if it's like small action. It doesn't have to be like starting an agency right away. It can be just like small action just to validate um, this is kind of where you want to go to see if you like it or not. And you can always cancel it and go back to the research stage. So I really encourage you to take some kind of small action. Um, and then number three is to build relationships first. So get testimonials and trust to eventually get paid clients or referrals. And that's kind of included in the template that I offer, but I'll go through that template verbally as well. Um, and number four is be clear about the next steps, including paid options. So now I'm going to go through the template, but before I do that, um, if you want me to do the same for you, like offer free growth advice uh, for you or a company that you know, I, I prefer to work with um, productivity software as a service companies. So um, if you know anyone like that, please let me know, comment on this video or reply to my premium email. Um, you have to answer some of the qualifying questions, which I'll go over. And then all I ask for in return is a testimonial. Okay, so I'm going to go over the template now. This is for my friend. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, she is a teacher and she wants to grow her art account because she... <coughs> I think she is an illustrator as well and then she's writing a picture book. I think it's been accepted. I couldn't really tell by her account. Um, so she, the qualifying questions were, first, what is your business about? So give a description of the business. Second, what are, what's the number one goal for your business or um, what goals do you have here? And then third, what's the number one problem that you're struggling with and the fourth what have you been doing to solve that problem so far so I sent this to her and she sent me um, all the details back which helped and I asked a few more questions to kind of get a sense of where she's at um, so her goal was to grow her art account to 1,000 followers and then that was kind of vague so I added a deadline by February 29th 2024 um, but after learning a bit more about her, I was like, okay, I feel like 1,000 followers isn't going to help with your overarching goal because she, like, I know she wants to um, build an audience base for when she publishes her picture books. So I told her that her overarching goal, like a better goal would be collecting emails for her email list so that she can notify people when her book launches. Um, so after looking through her account and everything, I had three different phases. Phase one is set up a foundation. Phase two is take action. And phase three is evaluate and repeat. So phase one, I try to get her to under, like point out her value props. And I gave her some suggestions about what she could do to basically help her uh, page stand out. After she's figured out those core foundations, what sets her apart, um, I told her to improve her Instagram page accordingly. So she has to change her name to something with a keyword in it. So I suggested teacher and illustrator. Um, I told her to change her bio to be more clear um, about like what people get from following her account. So my suggestion was art to heal your inner child, which shows the benefit for people who follow. Um, but it's obviously up to her once she decides what her unique angle and value prop is. And then the next line is teacher by day, children's book illustrated by night. So this line shows what people can expect and the unique angle and her expertise and what makes her special. And then the last line is a call to action. So subscribe for book updates coming soon. And then it'll be the link in her bio. Um, and then I helped her brainstorm some content. 
um, and told her to research some other art accounts and illustration accounts for inspiration to see what did well for their accounts and what she can take away for her own account. Um, so I told her short form video is highly recommended. Her hook should be strong and grab attention in the first two seconds. She needs to include mini hooks throughout the video so people keep watching. Have some movement in the first two seconds. It can be her hand drawing something. Include some kind of action you want people to take at the end like commenting or going to the link in the bio. <clears throat> Although commenting is better because it's more engagement and boosts the post. And then think about what value her posts bring to viewers with every single post. Like, will they learn something? Does it help with their mindset? Like, would they be more motivated after and feel good after? Will they be entertained? Um, and then speak to a problem that the audience has. So I came up with some examples for her, um, like showing her sell her art prints at the store, but then telling a story about it, like how it happened. What tips do, does she have for people? So like in the post itself, like it's valuable for um, whoever is watching it. And then some other examples I had were like her art before and after. So like sketches versus final product before and after becoming a teacher, etc. And then I came up with a, a fun activity. So like ask her student to draw random scribbles and then turn it into an art piece and then film the process. And then you can reuse that same footage for multiple different videos with different hooks and angles. So like one video could be watch me turn my students drawing into this. Video number two could be my student gave me their drawing. So I did this. Video number three could be like point of view, POV, you're an artist bringing magic into kids' lives. And then th that just like keeps people watching, which helps boost your video a little bit. Um, and then I told her to speak to a problem. So if her audience is parents, because she's selling picture books and parents buy picture books, maybe having a video is something like when your kid asks for a bedtime story, but all you can think about is like, what's for breakfast tomorrow? And then she can film something picture book related or like have a funny drawing or showing some kind of concept or feeling. And then I told her to ask ChatGPT for more ideas, like give it some of the examples that I've listed here and ask it to come up with more. Um, tell ChatGPT, you're a world-class expert in short form video marketing and coming up with the best viral hooks. Give me hook ideas for, and then you list out some random, um, what your niche is and what your industry is and kind of what you want ChatGPT to give you. Okay, so the next thing I told her to do is set up systems. So create an account on Beehive um, she literally doesn't even need to do anything else except have an account because you don't need to set up a welcome email yet. You don't need to set up weekly newsletters or write stuff. That's just distraction right now. You need to just have it there so that when people start going to your account, they leave their emails and you have their emails. And then I told her to create an account on Metricool, which is a social media scheduling and analy analytics tool. It has a very comprehensive free plan. Um, she told me she was posting once a week. I also asked about her availability and how much time she had to work on this. And she said just evenings and weekends. And I said, you can probably do three times a week and you just have to schedule the posts ahead of time. And then uh, optional task for her was to set up an account on ManyChat, which is for DM automation. But I didn't think she needed it right now. Um, she can just encourage people to comment by asking a question instead of offering a freebie if people comment. Um, so that takes us to the next phase. So the first phase, all of the things that I described were like setting up the foundation. And then phase number two is taking action. So making a list of the content ideas, like I talked about um, creating the actual content. It should be like six to 12 posts. And let's say she posts three times a week. So it should be like two weeks to a month ready. And then schedule all of them. And then after that, we, it's phase three where you evaluate um, on the analytics dash dashboard on Metricool and then study which posts did the best. And then you create more content related to the best posts and then you just repeat. And so after that, I told her her next stops, her next steps are number one, implement all the suggestions that I've outlined for her. Like I have a whole to-do list here and a bunch of my ideas and then message me for advice and direction if she has more questions. Um, that's the free option. And this free option is available for you as well if you're a premium subscriber for my newsletter at $5 a month because this template is literally available for you to use. Um, option number two is pay. So if people are more interested in having me do everything on this list for them, then um, I told, well, I said here, let me know if you're interested and we can discuss the project scope and pricing. Send me all the assets and account details and I'll literally make the videos and content for you and schedule them all. And then I'll provide a monthly report and recommendations um, and basically tell her or tell my client 
what content to film and what to do. Um, but obviously that's going to be paid because it's more time intensive um, and uses my expertise. So and that's a template that you can use if you were to offer your services to someone and you want to try out like a free consultation version. Okay, sorry, I know I'm talking a lot, but there is just so much that I learned this week and hopefully it's valuable for you too. Um, okay, so in the next section in this email after all those templates is how I'm going getting to 20K monthly recurring revenue. So I think 75% of the revenue is gonna come from businesses. So think consulting, selling my services and sponsorships. And 25% is gonna come from consumers like premium newsletter subscriptions, selling templates and selling courses maybe in the future. I don't know yet. Um, so I decided this after hours of meetings, research and talking to experienced founders. So based on all the hours of research, here are your key takeaways that I think are important for you to know if you want to start your own business. So number one, mindset is the most important. You need to be confident in yourself and what you charge. So I undercharged a lot because I just felt bad charging people for stuff. But I realized that I came from a mindset of not valuing my own time and not valuing myself as much as I do other people. So I needed to kind of get used to changing that mindset. Plus, you know, I try not to feel bad about charging others because most people are happy to pay if you bring them value. Plus, when you offer something for free, I feel like people don't, you know, cherish it as much because it was free. Two, ask brands for their budget and goals first before saying your pricing. You need to position yourself as a consultant that can help them grow. Three, relationships are important. You can charge high. There's a thing called anchor bias where people get anchored to that initial high price. And then say you'll offer them a discount to test working with you first and then hopefully secure a long-term collaboration. People liking and trusting you means they're more willing to pay you. And actually all my sponsors have been people I somewhat knew already from Twitter or other communities. <clears throat> I kind of expected them to be strangers. Um, and number four, Validate demand before going all in on building something. Like pull people for feedback, offer a smaller service with reduced cost. This ensures you take action fast instead of being stuck in the decision stage. This is because I was stuck on figuring out if I wanted to do like a five day email course or like a 30 day email challenge or something else. Like you need to just ask a bunch of people um, and then try and make that decision for yourself based on the reasoning that people are giving you. Um, trust yourself, but then like don't get overwhelmed from <clears throat> all the opinions that you're getting because you are in charge of your business. Um, you can make the decisions after consulting a, a lot of different opinions. Okay, and then the last one, I think that's number five. Um, most creators have the biggest percentage of their income come from company companies. So like sponsorships, advising and speaking opportunities. So that's why I put 75% of my monthly recurring revenue is going to come from businesses probably and that's why I'm exploring this consultant um, like agency route. <clears throat> and I have a screenshot here that is a DM from someone on Twitter because I was trying to figure out how to like pricing strategies and how, to, how much to charge sponsors. Um, somebody said, you know, don't get me wrong, like your current metrics are really, really good, but I don't want to charge too much and I'd rather overperform with a sponsor than underperform. Um, and then he was helping me sort out like how much I should charge based on the clicks that I was getting in my emails. And um, a lot of people can ask for discounts as well. So um, that's why I said that thing earlier about anchor bias. You can charge high, but then offer a discount or like if people ask for a discount, you can give them some. Um, as long as you're confident that you can deliver the value and then you have to like crunch the numbers a little bit. Um, yeah, I can dive more in detail about this later if you want, but um, yeah, just let me know via email or in the comments. Okay, so now the possible revenue streams that I'm considering. First up is B2B, so this is business to business, me charging companies. There's consulting and advising services. I signed up for Mentor Cruise to validate this to see if people even liked my advice. Um, done for you marketing services presentations and speaking opportunities, and sponsorships, so ads and newsletter or social media accounts. Then there's D2C, direct-to-consumer, or like me charging individuals. I have a Ko-Fi coffee link, so it's like a buy me coffee donation. Like if, if people appreciate the value that I'm giving them and they love my content, they're free to donate however much they want to. Um, I also am planning to sell digital products, so like templates and maybe presentation slide decks. 
um, affiliate marketing. So I really regret not signing up for a bunch of affiliates earlier because people like I always recommend products I use to people and if people end up buying those products then I could get a percentage of that revenue but I didn't sign up for and I didn't apply for those affiliate programs until too late. Um, paid premium newsletter subscription, online courses and social media payouts so like monetizing YouTube views. Um, I don't have enough watch time on YouTube for that so maybe that would be like a future thing. So this month um, the profit is for my business so far. Today is January 17th, by the way. Um, I've gotten 715 USD and this is mostly from sponsors. So it's 54, I have a pie chart here, 54.1% from sponsors, 38.4% from premium subscriptions and 7.6% from random donations on my Buy Me A Coffee website. And I got two, <clears throat> so like 54% of my revenue this month came from two sponsors both from communities like Twitter or Beehive's Slack. Um, and then my expenses this month were mainly software subscriptions like ManyChat, which is my DM automation, um, Beehive and CapCut. I paid for CapCut even though it's free because I wanted to use one animation for one video um, that I thought was funny, but it didn't even do that well. So whatever, now I have premium for like a month. Um, okay, the next section, why I'm sharing everything transparently online. Um, I was only able to learn so much this week like this video is so long at this point you probably like if you're listening to this at the gym you probably are done your gym session already um, but this is why I'm sharing everything transparently online I was only able to learn so much because I shared everything on Twitter I actually asked ChatGPT for help but it didn't really have the experience that some of the build in public community members on Twitter does so a lot of people actually replied or DM'd me with more insightful advice than what ChatGPT was able to give and also one year ago, I was really inspired by someone who shared how much she was making from her online business. So I wanted to inspire other people like that too. Okay, some other learnings and announcements. Um, some of the premium subscribers did not get my last email with all of the templates that I've made. All these templates are free until February 1st, 2024. So they are always going to be on my website. So go to vegantechnomad.com and then click on the post with all the templates. Um, announcement number two is I'm increasing my premium subscription pricing to $11 a month starting on February 1st, 2024. So this basically works out to be $2.75 per email, which includes all of my templates. Um, so for current email subscribers, your subscription will stay at $5 a month forever because you know, you're an early subscriber and I appreciate you being here early. Um, but if you know any friends or business partners who still want to keep that cheaper $5 a month pricing, make sure they upgrade to premium before February 1st because then I'll be increasing it to $11 a month. Okay, some other cool resources that I found this week. Um, there's this tool called Gummy Search where you can find communities on Reddit and see what people are talking about and see what they're struggling with. And this can help you with your content and with your products. Um, there was also a cool tweet that I saw about, um, sorry, I had to like note something down, but um, there's a cool tweet that I saw about how to make content and how you have a lot of content ideas and what to post. So first solve problems that your past self had and what you wish you knew, and then post different types of content and then post more on the best performing topic. Okay, and then now here are my learnings from some of the mistakes that I made this week. Um, so put ways to support you in high visibility pages like your about page or on <coughs> whatever post of yours gets the most views. Because a lot of people, um, I thought I communicated well how to support me but a lot of people still didn't know about like my donation link and my premium subscriptions so you need to you know, put, that, put that stuff everywhere. Um, add polls in your welcome email series so you can improve them because these emails really set the tone for this new subscriber and have the highest open rates. Um, number three, you can't make everyone happy. Some people will always ask for more frequent emails and some will ask for less. I actually had someone ask for less, so that's why for the email welcome series, I changed the delay between the emails to be two days instead of one day. So instead of getting an email every day, it'll be every two days. Um, number four is distribution is important. Repeat what you're offering everywhere multiple times. A lot of people won't see it the first time. 
Number five, I spent way too much time responding to DMs and comments throughout the day. I was always just checking my phone and I wasted so much time. So instead I should set aside one hour just to do that and then go back to working on higher leverage tasks outside of ma social media. Okay, the other thing I learned was about Master Resell Rights courses, which is apparently this course that you can buy and then sell it yourself, but it's not like you didn't make the course or anything, but it's illegal to sell it as your own to your audience. But this felt really weird to me, so I'm not doing it. But if you want to explore it as a revenue stream, feel free to Google Master Resell Rights courses. I just thought that was interesting. Okay, that kind of brings us to the end of this email, but please vote on next week's topic. If you're not subscribed to Premium, um, please just comment in this video. But if you are, please vote in the email or reply to my email. Um, the poll is, what do you want to learn next? Um, how to get started and how to grow or more details about monetization. Okay, I'll have more next Friday, so I'm super excited. Again, remember to subscribe to Premium if you are not already because I'm going to be increasing the prices on February 1st. Thank you.